I'd love to tell you a little bit more about myself. My name is Kamaria Pingi, and I, although I live in Canada, I have I was born in Jamaica, and um, it was through Jamaica and my parents and their uh, influence, you know, in terms of our, you know, heroes in Jamaica like Marcus Garvey and uh, uh, Bob Marley that I came to be interested in my African heritage. And as I grew up here in Canada, I became fascinated with Ghana in particular and, um, and its connection with Jamaica. And after that, I realized that uh, growing up in Canada, that it was how important it was for me to reconnect with my African identity. And so I eventually started dancing, doing storytelling, fashion design, Afrocentric fashion design. And now I have a business with uh, that. Um, I guess it would, uh, it, it's called Maybe Sankofa because of the Adinkra symbol, Sankofa, returning and getting the knowledge from our ancestors and bringing it forward into the future and into the presence. Everyone has a story to tell. Uh, we, we literally believe that to be true. It, uh, each and every one of us, if you were to look at the life that we have lived, uh, you could be, I don't know, 30 years, 40 years, if you were to take up a book and write about you, Nobody can take up the book. It would be too heavy to lift up because you have lived a lot of a lot of experiences. And we are not yet talking about the connection that you have to your ancestors, to the millions of years of our evolutionary history, which you are able to tap into through your subconscious. So in each of us, there are huge uh, uh, library of story that we can talk about. So I will start with, so you were born in Jamaica, right? Yes, in Montego Bay. Ah, okay. Tell me a bit about your childhood. You were growing up. What do you see around you? What sort of form your identity as you are growing up in Jamaica? Mm -hmm. Well, I left Jamaica quite young. I left Jamaica and started school in Canada. So I was five years old when I left Jamaica. But it's very interesting that I still have some sense memories about Jamaica. When I came to Canada, there were certain things that my family would bring, you know, into our home, into the culture of our home that, you know, that shaped me, right? So, you know, all of the things that Jamaican parents believe in and value, they instilled in me, including music, including the types of cultural foods that we eat, um, including spirituality, all of those things. So, Although I don't, you know, because I left as a child, I don't remember much about Jamaica, the physical Jamaica. I do have the spiritual, um, you know, kind of sense memory instilled in me. So in terms of that, I would say that, um, you know, the sights and sounds may not be specific, but I do remember the tastes. I do remember the smells, like the smell of the sea. I don't remember where I was at the time, but I think just this, I think, oh, I remember. I went to Vancouver, which is the far uh, west coast of Canada, which is close to the sea. And I remember walking on the beach and smelling the ocean and just getting that, you know, instant you know, taken back to my childhood and the, the smell of the sea. And I remember when I was in Montego Bay, we didn't live very far from the sea and we used to go swimming. And so, you know, it's very interesting how sights and sounds can, and smells even can bring you back to a place of home. And I remember feeling very much, you know, surprised that this part of me you know, meant so much, just the smell of the ocean. Yeah, All right. That's great. Uh, smell of the ocean. I remember a couple of uh, weeks ago, I interviewed the world leader of uh, voodoo, which is uh, in Benin. Then at the point we're talking about water, we're talking about ocean. I was like sort of asking him, what is the connection between voodoo religion and uh, the ocean? Of course, a lot of beautiful things actually came out from there. Uh, so now, 
you are talking of uh, you going now very close to the ocean and you are having a sense of um, of connection and of course taking you back to your root and of course this would not even be difficult for people to understand if we if we were to think a, a bit no because uh, up to 70 percent of our body is comprised of water and water is from the ocean that is where it naturally stays no mm -hmm. uh, so there are a lot of things that are in us that sort of give a call back to where we are coming from and for the fact that that uh, sort of take you back to to jamaica where you are your root are that is really very important now and deep in itself um mm -hmm. but i have a lot of curiosity whenever i'm talking to uh, african diaspora i i feel there is this connection there is this urgency to connect among ourselves it is important in jamaica when you, I don't know uh, how much it was important there to talk about Africa. Because now, it's like a kind of, um, you are in Canada, you are talking about your root, which is Jamaica. Then from Jamaica, we're going to talk about the root of Jamaica itself, which is Africa. So you see now, it's sort of, <laughs> it's going around and all around the game. And of course, you managed to make the connection to Ghana, and where the name Sakofa actually is coming from, we sort of have a lot of uh, meaning to what you are doing. Uh, I find all of it, all of it, to make sense to be very important. But let me go back to the question again before I get uh, missing on it. How relevant was it to talk about African roots while you are in Jamaica? Well, you know, I like I said, I was quite young while I was there. But we've my family has been back to visit several times, and I noticed that. Um, our, some of our leaders, you know, entertainers like Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, uh, uh, you know, Marcus Garvey, you know, just to name a few, there's very many, you know, they realized that there was a connection with Africa. Um, even in Jamaica, there's a place called Akampong, and it is in the mountains in Montego Bay and where a lot of Ashanti people settled. And they say um, one of our leaders, Queen Nanny, um, came um, to visit her loyal subjects because a lot of um, Africans came to Jamaica and they were, you know, living there. Um, you know, they, it was the transatlantic Atlantic slave trade that brought them there. And um, she uh, came to see her people and that ignited a revolution you know, because she realized that her people were enslaved and um, she helped them to fight against um, the British and the Spanish. So that place still exists because they made demands on the British um, government and, you know, they created their own society, their own community. In fact, it's a protected place. Not everybody can go there without permission. Um, so that stands alone as, you know, uh, a beacon of, you know, of ancestry that is in Jamaica that we're very proud of. You know, the fact that not only did they defeat the British and the Spaniards, but they preserved their culture and it's still there today. And they have their own government. You know, they're a very proud, self-sustained people. Um, so whenever we go, I go back to Jamaica, you know, it's, um, I'm noticing more and more that we're reconnecting with our roots because of those leaders and because of the, um, the Moors and the Ashantis and, you know, um, and how connected they, they are to their roots. 